Leadership is the capacity that translates vision into reality. Are you a leader? Am I a leader? Ask this question from yourself. One might say, well, I've not thought about it yet. I need to think about it. One might say, well, I believe that I'm a leader. I can confidently say that because I've been organizing this conference. One might say, well, I don't think so. Friends, ever since the day you've been gifted to this world, you and me, we are leaders. How do we say this? Since the moment that you tried to open up your eyes and speak up, you cried out loud, you took leadership for your life. The moment you tried to take the first step, you fell down and you picked yourself back up again and you took the next step forward. You took leadership for your life. The moment you started writing letters, taking that pencil to your hand and the moment the pencil just flipped, you picked it back up again and you started writing. You took leadership for your life. So you and me, ever since the day we've been gifted to this world, we've been leaders. But the question is, are we leaders with a vision? A leader with a goal? A leader with a plan to achieve in life? Have we found the purpose of our lives? Now let me share with you a few things that I've learned from my life that has helped me become a visionary leader. Step number one, discover yourself. Now how do you discover yourself? To discover the true potential that lies within you, you need to be a problem solver. How do you become a problem solver? Now in most cases, we understand our life is like a roller coaster ride. It has ups and downs and twists and turns. And during this roller coaster ride, we go, we go through different problems in life. But the moment a problem comes in front of us, it's up to us whether we are going to become a solver or whether we are only going to worry about that problem, making another problem at the end of the day. Two, to take risks in life. Be a risk taker to unleash the potential in your life. Now, how did I do this? I started off my education when I was two and a half years old. Why? My parents wanted to push me to school at a very early age because they were super busy parents working, one working at the Ministry of Higher Education of Sri Lanka and the other working at Sri Lanka Customs Department. Super busy parents. Now, was my life a bed of roses? No, it was not. Life became very hectic, terrific and terrible. Why? Because I was going through a lot of bullying amongst the teammates, peers in the class. Little did I know that I had to go through all of these troubles when I took that very first step to get into the school at a very, very younger age. But here come surprises in your way as problems. But are you only going to keep looking at those problems and only keep worrying about it? Or are you going to take leadership in your life to solve those problems? Now, this is how I took leadership in my life. I was not a very good student in my first few grades starting off from the lower kindergarten to upper kindergarten to grade one and so on. I was either the 13th, 14th or the 15th in the class and I was just trying my best to manage things, going through a terrific time in class and always I used to come back home and cry and tell my mom to homeschool me. And that was the only thing I pleaded and asked for her, asked from her every single day that I came back home from school. So friends, this one single prize awarding ceremony changed my life. I still remember grade two prize giving ceremony. I was seated right at the back of the hall, waiting, watching. 
Why was I seated right at the back? Because I didn't have a prize. I didn't have a certificate. I was only watching the performances of the other students, the peers, the classmates who have performed extremely well during the year. My parents were not there because I didn't have a single prize or a certificate. Lonely seated right at the back. I was watching and I could see as soon as the award ceremony started, our best students' names are being called upon on stage and they come rushing onto the stage, grab the certificate or the trophy and run back and give it to their parents, mom or the dad. And they would be so happy and they would even talk to their friends and colleagues who are around to say, look there, that's my son, that's my daughter. She's the first in the class during all the three terms last year. Brilliant performance. She's so dedicated. With tears rolling down their cheeks, tears of happiness, parents would cuddle their kids when they come back with the trophies and certificates. And I was thinking, Budima, what are you doing with your life? You seem to be creating a hell out of your life, only complaining about everything that's going on in the school and with the classmates. But you do not want to change yourself. That's when it struck me that I need to change. I realized with tears rolling down my cheeks that day that I need to change. I need to make education the only weapon that's going to change my life. And education is definitely going to help me stand up for myself. I go back home completely changed with a changed mindset. And I decide that I would work hard with dedication, commitment, and put my 100% for the next grade. And there I start working wholeheartedly and my friends I still remember grade 3 first term examination comes results report card more than 85 percent marks for all the subjects and I became the first in the class for the very first time in my life what a happiness I thought one day in the prize awarding ceremony, the annual one, I'm going to make my parents happy too. Just like those kids made their parents happy. Just like they became happy. On that day, I was determined that I'm going to do the same. Here comes the grade three prize awarding ceremony. And I was able to bring back my parents. All the three terms, first place, and over 85% for all the subjects. And I was able to bring happy tears to the eyes of my parents too. Be a problem solver. Now coming back to my life, I was only 13 years old when I sat for my ordinary level examination. Little did I know that all level examination is going to be a transformative exam in the life. But then I worked hard. I was able to achieve the grades that were required to move into the advanced level examination. And there I selected subjects that helped me achieve my life as a medical doctor. One big dream that I had ever since the day that somebody would walk up to me and ask me, Budima, what do you want to be in life? Darling, what do you want to be in life? I would answer, I want to be a doctor. I used to collect all of these stethoscope and doctor sets and dream of becoming a doctor. So there I go for my advanced level examination when I was only 15 years old. Sat for the examination, got flying colors, successfully completed the exam. But in Sri Lanka, we were not able to get into a national university being an international school student. Then. A problem comes and I need to solve the problem. I talk to my parents and I start applying for international universities to pursue my dream of becoming a medical doctor one day. But there comes another problem. Both my parents were fully against me traveling to an unknown country 
at a very younger age, like the age of 15, to pursue my dream of becoming a medical doctor. And there I started researching on Google, what should I do now? And I realized that computer science is going to be my dream now. As computer science is an area that combines all the different areas, all the different fields in the future. So I should become a PhD one day. I was determined. So I completed a double degree at the age of 19 from the Curtin University of Australia and Sri Lanka Institute of Information Technology of Sri Lanka in computer science and software engineering, information technology. And then I moved to pursuing my career in PhD studies at the age of 19. And at the age of 24, I was able to successfully graduate as the youngest PhD holder of South Asia, keeping a record. Friends, life is a beautiful journey. It has ups and downs and twists and turns, but it's not a single destination. The moment you take risks in life, the moment you face problems with a positive mindset, you will understand that there are thousand opportunities out there waiting for you. And all that matters is whether you grab those opportunities and make most out of it. Secondly, now, if you've discovered yourself, it's very important for you to be a leader with a vision. However, being an effective communication is equally important. How do you become an effective communicator? Point number one, be a good listener. Now it's important that we also listen to what people say and act upon them rather than just hearing or overhearing what people say, which is something that most of us constantly do. And on the other hand, in becoming an effective communicator, learn the art of negotiation. Every single moment of our lives, it's a decision that we make. We negotiate with our own life, our own self. And it's important that we negotiate to bring our message across to another or take the appropriate decision. That's the best decision that you take for your life, taking ownership for your life. Be an effective communicator because due to miscommunication, we see a lot of conflicts happen in the society and people are divided and families are divided. Relationships are broken. If you are a leader with a vision, you would be an effective communicator. You would understand what the other person would feel before you approach or speak to another. Let's develop the skill of being an effective communicator. Three, role models. Now, in my life, I have a role model, Professor Stephen Hawking. Each time that I went through difficult moments, troubles and hurdles that I had to really cross, I always didn't have the opportunity to speak to my role model over the phone or by text message. All I could do was to approach him on book. I used to read a lot of books about him. I used to watch a lot of videos about him. All that I could do was to go on Google and reach up to my role model and ask him, Professor Hawkins, if you were able to do it with all the difficulties that you went through in life, I should be able to do it, isn't it? And this is how I motivated myself. So friends, it's important to have a role model in life because life is never a bed of roses. We come across difficult situations, especially as a girl. There were situations where I had to really make decisions for my life. For example, at 19 years of age, when I decided to join the academic sector and then I worked in the academic sector for two years and I decided to resign from my job because I wanted to do my PhD full time. My parents were not happy with it. They were fully against it. And I decided that somehow I am going to make sure that I achieve my dream. So I convinced them I was able to make sure that they get convinced 
for me to resign from the job and go for the dream and the goal that I wanted to achieve in life. So friends, it's important that we understand that role models need to be there in life who would support us, who would help us to climb the ladder when we go through difficult moments in life. And do not forget to become a role model to many more out there and to support many more students and friends to help them grow as well when you achieve in life. Because that is the happiest moment ever that you would cherish in life when you get to support another, to give a helping hand to another, to be the reason for another's happiness, to see them and to help them grow, which I am experiencing right now. So in this journey of becoming a visionary leader, discover yourself to discover the true potential that lies within you. Be a risk taker, be a problem solver, be an effective communicator, be a good listener and be a good negotiator in life. And at the same time, have a role model. Whenever you go through difficult situations and moments in life, your role model will be a strength for you to support you take the very next step forward. And at the same time, do not forget to become a role model to many more because that's where you would experience the true happiness of life. I truly believe that there are two important days to our life. The day we are gifted to this world and the day we find the meaning why, the purpose of our life. Find the purpose of your life. I found the purpose of my life, which is to inspire many more youth in the different parts of the world. And here I am serving you today in this TEDx conference. So please, be that person who inspires many more people out there because that's one of the greatest happiness that you would ever achieve in life. Dreams can always be achieved and accomplished if the right action is taken towards its achievement.